Now, Peter wants to do more in this short passage that we've read together this evening. Peter wants to do a lot more than just kind of help you to think really big and, and glorious thoughts about the, about the Word of God, about its indomitability, about its lastingness. Paul wants you to think about the Word of God's accessibility. Uh, Peter, sorry. Peter wants you. We're, we're talking about Peter. I'm going to mess up those two all night, so just, just bear with me. And Peter says, because this word is the good news that was preached to you. What can we say about so grand and noble and glorious a power as the word of God? We can say that according to the apostles, it's the foolish things of this world that God has chosen to shame the wise. And it is the deposit of the otherwise shameful, humble, of no repute and no report among the world that God deposits this glorious treasure in jars of clay. This word of God, which will outlast all of the material world, this word of God that will outlast every atom in our universe, this word of God that humbles the brightest minds and judges the thoughts and the intents of every human heart, this word of God is the good news preached even unto you. This is the good news. This is the good news that gets conveyed from one heart to another heart through the simple, ordinary means of communication, sharing, speaking. I, I, I don't know about you guys, but have you ever been evangelizing, maybe out on the street or just sharing with a work colleague or a, a family member, and you, you, you felt a little foolish or, or you felt entirely impotent to make them grasp it? And sometimes what we do is we take up far too much onus on ourselves as the vehicle of communication and we downplay the power of the communication itself. The power of God is not in how well you can articulate it. It's in the truth of the content itself. 